Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. As America prepares to inaugurate a president who at least half the country doesn't like, there's a widely shared presumption that Donald Trump will be erratic on his good days and dangerous on his bad days. Will he live down to his haters' low expectations and one day be regarded as one of our worst presidents? Obviously, it's way too early to know that. A few months ago, I wrote in my Blade column about America's worst presidents, citing the bottom ten lists of author Nathan Miller and a local presidential scholar, Gerald Bazer. We asked for reader input regarding their own rogues gallery. They happily and enthusiastically provided it. I hesitate to call their two dozen responses a survey because of the small sample. But if there was a consensus choice as the worst of the worst, President George W. Bush is your guy. Now that's unfair because it's way too soon to rate a presidency so recent. We cannot yet rank Bush the Younger any more than we can rank Barack Obama. Time must pass. Besides, W. was hardly alone among the nominees. One reader called Harry Truman the worst because of his decision to drop atomic bombs on Japan. Lyndon Johnson was cited as a tragic figure who expanded the Vietnam War and burdened the nation with the staggering costs of his great society social programs. Ronald Reagan was taken to task as a chronic flip-flopper who either lied or couldn't control his staff, but got a pass because he was charming and glib. Bill Clinton was at the bottom of another reader's list for his conduct in the Oval Office. Still another was critical not of a president, but of those who knee-jerk enlist Herbert Hoover among our worst presidents. Nothing, he said, could be further from the truth. Another respondent thought Jimmy Carter, quote, should have stayed on the peanut farm, end of quote. The same reader called Richard Nixon a crook and then noted an irony. Who knew, he asked, presumably in good humor, that it would be a prerequisite today. Not all the nominees by readers were from the modern era. Andrew Jackson was ripped for his economic policies, racist views, and his displacement of Indian tribes known as the infamous Trail of Tears. Not surprisingly, since James Buchanan makes most lists of lousy presidents, he was nominated by Blade readers as well, who called him a doe face, a northern man with southern principles. He's often cited not for what he did, but what he didn't do, hold the union together. One reader listed his three losers, Buchanan, Ulysses Grant, and Warren Harding, a native Ohioan. Wikipedia has an interesting summary of presidential rankings, a compilation of 17 surveys and polls over the years by historians and respected institutions. In the aggregate, Abraham Lincoln was ranked at the top, FDR and George Washington are second and third. At the other end of Wikipedia's list, President Harding from Marion was dead last. Will Donald Trump someday take Harding's place at the bottom? As a nation, we have to hope not, no matter how much Harding's descendants might wish it so. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.